Hello everyone, welcome back to Classic Automotive Services. Today we're going to be working on TR7. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for the great response to the video first video we went last week. We're quite overwhelmed with how well it done and the nice comments people put on there and just the general interest that we've had. So today we're going to be porting the manifold to suit the already ported head and measuring all the valve clearances to get the shims made ready to be finally install the cam and hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll have this car back up and running and do some road tests and we'll take you guys along with us as well to see how it actually performs also please let us know how the new microphone is doing um, as we did notice that the volume was quite quiet on the last video hopefully this helps out so Let's go and have a look at the manifold. So, this is the tier, This is the manifold that's going to be fitted to the TR7. As I said in the last video, it's an eighteen fifty dollar mic manifold. And if you haven't looked at the last video, please go and watch it as we describe why we're going to this manifold and why we're going to be using it on this application. So, we need to open out these ports to suit our ported head. So. Porting a manifold is actually extremely easy. There's a few ways you can do it. All you need is a few basic tools. I have my Dremel with a nice carbide burr in the end of it. I have a gasket which has been opened out and matches the cylinder head. So that's going to be my template that I use. A few bolts just to locate the gasket for marking out where I'm going to be taking the material out. Now there's a few ways you can mark it out. You could fit the gasket like so with the bolts in it. Get an aerosol can, spray it and that when you remove the gasket that will show you the material that you have to take out. As we're using this gasket we're not going to be painting it. So what I do is I put the gasket on, I then locate the gasket with some, with some nice snug fitting bolts, don't need the washer, like so, and then I just get a good old sharpie. And all I do is draw around it and colour it in there's the first one second one third one and last but not least the fourth one right down there take the bolts back out one side As you can see, that is the material that we have got to remove. It's not a great deal of material to remove, but it will make an incredible difference to the way the engine performs. And this is something that anybody can do at the home with the right tools and just take your time with it. And you will see the benefits of how your car runs and performs just by doing this. Even if it's a completely standard engine, you will benefit from doing this. So, all I'm going to do now is lightly hold it in the vise. He says, just very, very lightly hold it. Safety first. You don't want aluminium 
particles in your eyes. I've been there, done that. It is not fun. Get your Dremel with your carbide burr bit. And start very slowly, very carefully, taking out the material that you don't need. Now, we're not going to open out the ports all the way through, as these manifolds are actually extremely thin past this flange. So all we're going to do is open it out and radius it and feather it into the existing port so that there is no step between this and the head, which will aid airflow dramatically. So, let's give it a go. Now, that's most of the material yeah. taken out. <laughs> none, of that, none of them jokes. As you can see, I've now ported the first port. Just roughed it out a little bit. Needs finishing off. So I've taken it out to the green line. As you can see, there's no tiniest little bit of green left around this one. But as when I finish it off, it will be the correct size. Now, when it comes to porting a manifold or a head for any instance, you do not, on the inlet side of things, you do not want a smooth polished finish as this, that will actually lose you power because the fuel and air doesn't actually mix and atomize properly. You will get globules of fuel pick up on the smooth polished finish and it will not actually run correctly so what you want is you actually want a slightly rough finish that is too rough that's got to be finished off with some finer tools yet um but you want a slightly rough finish so the air is a little bit tiny bit turbulent and mixes the fuel so that is the start of the manifold just three more to go and then on the other side what we're going to do is inside you can see where it splits Going to carefully get in there and just knife edge that so it flows better each way so you haven't got such a quite a big obstruction in the way so that's manifold port so this one yet yeah? yeah number two i'm gonna go that against that We are doing here is we're having to measure the clearances as 
as we described last week, the clearances are absolutely massive. And we can't actually get feeler gauges underneath there because we haven't stacked the feeler gauges so thick, it's just making it completely inaccurate. So what we're doing is we've got digital vernier. We're putting the root, putting a steel rule flat on top of the head, measuring down to the bucket, lifting the bucket up, remeasuring it, subtract the two. That gives us how big the clearance is at the moment. And then once we've worked all this out, we can then take the cam out, measure the shims, and add the two together, minus the clearance that we need, and that's how thick the shims need to be. Very time consuming, a bit annoying, because it's a bit fiddly, but unfortunately, it's what needs to be done. Especially so, when you've got one off cam. Yeah. Go on, nearly that, nearly that. A little bit more by the look of it. I think about that then. What to say about that? <clears throat> That's it. Okay, we put him on that. It's not gonna work there. Put it there like so. Zeroed. Seventeen point four five. Same as the first. Recording. So we've now finished measuring up all the valve clearances, and here's what we got. So we've got the clearance, what it is at the moment, the thickness of the shim that's already in there, and we've added them two together, minus our clearance, which is zero point two millimeters. For you old school people out there, that's eight thou. And we've come up with what the shims need to be for each cylinder, each valve. And we'll get these made, and that should get our clearances absolutely perfect for this. So we'll get on the case and get these made. And it should be a case of drop them in, put the cam in, torque it down, check the clearances are correct. And that should be that job done. Once the manifold finished, we can get that back on, get the cars back on run up the engine, run the camshaft in, do any alterations to the ignition time and the fueling, and we should be good to go. So that's the update on the TR7 this week. On another note, we've seen <coughs> our pre previously in the video when we've started measuring clearances, my colleague Tom is here, who's just coming in now. I am me. This is Tom. He works here at Classical Mode Service with us. So he's uh, here available this week. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a good laugh and we have some fun, don't we? Try to. So, um, but. No, sorry. we've done all the thickness on, on that this week. So hopefully soon we'll have some more information for you to follow. Hopefully. So and we'll be able to take it out for a road test and take this lot along with us for the road test and show them how it actually performs. And do some minor tweaking. Yeah. Hopefully. And so then, that's the TR7. Try, then try and do some more on that speed. Yeah, I'm still looking at where to start on that one. Yeah, that's a long list, isn't it? If we go over here, we've got a small update on the Dolomite. We re received a parcel this week. I like a nice parcel. These are the headlight panels to convert it to a Dolomite sprint front end. Now, they're actually in very good condition. They look a bit scabby, but I'm going to give them a light blasting so they're ready to fit. We've got the pair of the same vehicle. And one thing that is really good is that they are genuine panels off another car. And I personally look quite like that as cars which are beyond repair donating their parts to keep other cars going on the road. They are supplied by a bloke called Graham at Parts for Classics Limited. So if you need any parts for your classic cars, I can't recommend that guy enough. He's very nice and he will do everything he can to help you out. 
So that's it for this week. Um, next week we'll have more progress on the Dolomite. There'll be some more work done on that. And we'll have some more work done on the TR7 because they're both coming on quite well. Thank you all for watching. See you next week.